it, it's surprising because it, all the industrial populations in the world, heart disease is the dominant cause of death. So here's a population which has 95% less heart disease as a cause of death. That's very interesting. From the USC Leonard Davis School of Gerontology, this is Lessons in Lifespan Health, a podcast about the science and scientists improving how we live and age. I'm Orly Bellman, Chief Communications Officer. On today's episode, how university professor Caleb Finch is helping us understand the relationships between aging, our genes, and our environment through his studies of ancient mummies and pre-modern societies. Around the world, heart disease is the leading cause of death. In the U.S., this has been the case since the 1930s when it gradually replaced infections like pneumonia and tuberculosis. As lifespans have extended over the last century, heart disease has been considered a modern affliction, brought on by lifestyle factors like cigarette smoking, unhealthy diets, and too little exercise. USC Leonard Davis School biologist Caleb Finch joined a team of researchers who set out to see if they could find evidence of heart disease in earlier societies. And they did it in a very interesting way. They studied mummies from four different regions around the world, sometimes sitting with them in hospital emergency rooms, waiting for a turn to see inside their remains, using CT machines meant for patients. Well, in Lima, Peru, in one of our study sites, uh, mummies were being brought in from the National Museum under armed guard and mummies bundles in people's arms sitting in the emergency room's outer office waiting for a break in the patient flow to go in and put a mummy under this under the machine. So it was quite a quite a sight. The resulting scans show evidence in their ancient arteries of calcium deposits, an early sign of heart disease. And the oldest individual may be the Tyrolean Iceman, Utsi as he's called, who was uh, three thousand BC living in the Copper Age, and both of his carotid arteries uh, were calcified. He died because of a wound from a weapon, but uh, I think it's a conclusion that's fairly robust is that there, at least in the last 10,000 years in the Neolithic era, people have had some level of atherosclerosis, although it may not have been a major cause of death or disability. The findings are noteworthy because they suggest that a hardening of the arteries may be part of the general process of aging, regardless of time and place. To explore this further, Finch enlisted his cardiology colleagues from the Mummy team to join an ongoing global collaboration, led by anthropologists Hillard Kaplan and Mike Gervin, to study the heart health of the Chimane, a pre-industrial tribe living along the Amazon River in Bolivia. We flew to La Paz and then we were met by Bolivian uh, part of the team who uh, took us in a series of two other air flights uh, to the uh, town that is at the edge end of the road called San Borja. Uh, and from there, we took a 25-foot uh, dugout canoe with a little tiny motor called a peca peca. That's what it sounds like, uh, and went up river for eight hours, and you had to sit absolutely still because the canoe, the dugout was heavily loaded, and slight tilt when anybody passenger moved, and brown water uh, slopped in from the river. So we got to this uh, Santa Maria, the closest town, which is 18 miles up river, and that's where the uh, Gervin and, and Kaplan's uh, field station uh, is where they have uh, a laboratory for testing uh, blood and, and also for conducting exercise tests. It turns out that when the Chimane live to an old age, they show very low levels of heart disease. It's surprising because it, all the industrial populations in the world, heart disease is the dominant cause of death. So here's a population 
which has 95% less heart disease as a cause of death. That's very interesting. When it comes to arterial age, an 80-year-old Shimane looks like an American man or woman in their mid-50s. So what has uh, turned out uh, to my cardiologist's surprise, and when they actually started imaging the uh, older Chimane, that they have almost no vascular disease. Uh, and stroke and heart attack are very rare causes of death. Uh, it, they're mostly death is caused by infections or associated with infections. And it's a wonderful mystery as to how uh, the rate of uh, blood vessel aging is so much slower in this population uh, than in North America and Western Europe. So we're studying this uh, in terms of diet, in terms of stress, in terms of disease load, and of course, uh, we are looking at their individual uh, genetics. The Chimane's heart health is also surprising because they have high levels of inflammation, a marker in our modern world that has been associated with an increased chance of having a heart attack or stroke. And that's why the Chimane project is so fascinating because they have lifelong high inflammation and you, we all would have predicted and did that they would have had faster aging for these same diseases, but it's not the case at least for that heart disease. Finch suspects that there's a difference in the source and impact of the Chimane's inflammation and what we experience in our industrial society, where inflammation is driven by our diets, air pollution, tobacco smoke, and our own fat deposits. For the Chimane, inflammation, Finch says, is likely a response to infections. I joined this project uh, really 15 years ago, and Eileen Crimmins also was with me on this to study how inflammation is manifested in this uh, unhealthy environment where almost everybody has chronic parasites and frequent uh, lung and GI disease. And do you have any um, speculation or hypotheses as to why they are spared, at least in heart disease? Well, if you're carrying a high load of infections, you're using a lot of your nutrient intake to uh, combat the infections and to repair tissue damage. So the Chimane have very low levels of blood lipids at the levels that are reached by uh, the modern uh, statins and other drugs that control uh, blood lipids in our uh, high fat intake world. So my hypothesis is that they simply are using this energy uh, elsewhere, and that is part of why there is uh, so little accumulation of, of, uh, of blood vessel fat and, uh, with aging. And is there anything that could translate to our modern society? I assume we don't want to increase our uh, parasites. Well, I think the, I think the take-home is that you want to maintain low blood lipids and low blood sugar, which is the Chimane package, of course, nobody wants to consider or should getting a belly full of parasites to do that. Uh, we, in our relatively healthy, somewhat sterile environment, can do it uh, with choice of uh, diet and, and exercise. And as needed, the, the drugs are now available to uh, control both uh, blood lipids and blood sugar. Finch and his colleagues are now interested in understanding brain aging in the Chimane. Along with USC colleagues Andrea Rimia and Margie Gatz, he has begun research involving cognitive testing and brain imaging. They are looking at whether the Chimane also have lower rates of Alzheimer's disease and dementia than we do. We predict what's good for the heart is good for the brain, that uh, if their heart function is as good as we think it is, they should have better brain function at later ages than uh, in North America and Europe. Finch hopes these findings will help inform our understanding of Alzheimer's disease. He expects results within the next five years. He also realizes it is one of the last opportunities to learn about the effects of the Chimane's way of life, where they grow or hunt for their own food, are physically active, and don't smoke much.
Some of the young already have cell phones. Some of them are doing day work uh, for the timber companies and, and, and uh, going to San Borja and spending their money on McDonald's. So the, the next generation, within 10 years, uh, there will be remnants of the older lifestyle. And so we're catching them at the last possible moment before uh, they, they leave this traditional lifestyle and that is gone. Closer to home, Finch is leading a large research project looking at the role of air pollution in Alzheimer's disease. He continues to look at how genes and environments interact to impact aging. His studies of mummies and the Chimane show us there is much to be learned from unexpected findings. One of the great pleasures in science is you uh, put your best thoughts together and let them be challenged looking at different uh, varieties of lifestyle and turns up that there are things that seem paradoxical that give deeper insights into uh, basic mechanisms of aging. That wraps up this lesson in lifespan health. I'd like to thank Professor Caleb Finch for his time and expertise and all of you for choosing to listen. Join us next time and please subscribe to our podcast at lifespanhealth.usc.edu.